Well, I guess you could say that Rosalie Bastianich's first college party was an event to die for. After party guest April suddenly died from embarrassment in the backyard of a house party. Not to mention the sun rising. Said party was officially over. Our not so berry air Rosalie Bastianich and her friends. Kimberly Petty and Santos Royal. Heading back to the Drake Hall. Though Rosalie expected Kimmy to be upset about her woohoo buddy. Her interest in Santos seemed to be distracting her. That and the fact that she stayed up all night and was exhausted. Rosalie was really trying to help her college bestie out santos already tried to get with rosalie at the party why doesn't he just get with kimmy she's a good time rosalie promised she's witnessed it herself they both wanted to get wicked tonight so why not she's not drunk and her dorm is upstairs he didn't even think she was a little cute santos did think she was kinda cute but her desperation reeked and was kinda a turn off but rosalie was right all right all right he'll woohoo with kimmy me. Why not? That's what Rosalie wanted to hear. So she was thrilled for her bestie when Santos finally asked to go up with her up to her dorm and get a tour of her bed. Rosalie felt like the woohoo wizard. If she can't get any today, at least Kimmy could. Though, I think we've spent enough time with Rosalie for the time being. Because I'm hearing that back at home in Windenburg, things are growing a little chaotic with Rosalie's absence. Little Bella Westwood has been thoroughly enjoying herself as an only child for the first time young adulthood was slowly approaching she finished sending in her college applications and she'd been rocking her alien form non-stop for once she was feeling really good about herself living part-time as an alien again was the best decision she could have made sure she gets a few weird looks from the kids at school but she's asserted her dominance and she's done so by publicly getting back at the girl who used to bully her as a child Kendra Smith who just transferred to Copperdale High School. Oh, big mistake Kendra, big mistake. But it was no fun just making Kendra fear for her life only at school. She wanted Republican Barbie to think of her and the possibility of her popping up at all times. Whether that was school, or the school bus, or the gym, or her safest place, the comfort of her own home. It was on sight, rain or shine, hot or cold, human form or alien form. The way she bullied her relentlessly in elementary school was something Bella would never forget. And something Kendra would never get a break from. She ruined her confidence, knocked her tooth out, and embarrassed her in front of all of their classmates. For that crime against the alien race, Kendra will have to pay until she dies, Christ Bella, maybe slow down a little. But she wasn't slowing down any time soon. Bella wouldn't be solely attacking Kendra face to face. She also wanted in on her deepest, darkest secrets. Ditching school to break into her house while her whole family was gone seemed like the reasonable thing to do. Oh damn, the cops are already here. You think this sitch is scared of some bacon? Bella searched every square inch of Kendra's tiny home, thinking to herself, damn it smells like broken here, should have spent that valuable time filling out a job application. It was after checking under the mattress where she found a smoking gun, Kendra's diary. And in it was something she knew would absolutely ruin Kendra if anyone found out about it. Spreading rumors about woohoo on purpose. Well, Kendra was just as psychotic as Bella. She was really trying to get the whole school knocked up for shits and giggles. How fun it will be to tell everyone the truth. She kept digging around, looking for more. And that's when she stumbled upon another one of Kendra's secrets, this one much darker than the other. When Kendra was a preteen, she was in a relationship with a young adult male. He was a cop and he threatened to have her arrested for drunk driving unless she woohooed with him. He still requests woohoo to this day to keep her secret. Bella felt like she was going to puke after reading that. Kendra has someone blackmailing her and he's making her woohoo with him and he's a young adult. That's... that's assault. She can't use that, right? Bella ignored that secret and continued looking around the house. She thought it would be best to leave before her luck runs out and she gets caught. But not without taking a fat dump and pranking Kendra's toilets first.
Besides messing with Kendra, Bella had also spent her valuable time socializing. She was actually making friends now, and occasionally would be invited to go out to a shindig, and that meant sneaking out. Like she said, she had no more fucks to give. Gwyneth thought it was comical that Bella's version of sneaking out was going out the front door. She does know they have a ring doorbell, right? Gwyneth was actually happy that Bella was doing typical teenage things, like sneaking out to see her friends. She was always so scared Bella wouldn't live out her high school years to the fullest. But at the very least, being a late bloomer is better than nothing. She took advantage of Bella sneaking out by planning hers and Tanisha's wedding. Something she'd gotten started with doing to keep busy once Rosalie left for Brightchester. Gwynisha planned on finally getting married into Sundays, just a small, intimate ceremony in Tartosa with their family. Gwynisha also planned on announcing their engagement to Rosalie and Bella once Rosalie's first term is over, just a few days before the wedding. She felt like Rosalie could handle it and Bella would be over the moon. They both adored Tanisha and Tanisha adored them. Speaking of Tanisha, since they were now completely alone, perhaps they should share some quality time on the downstairs couch. The couch was probably Gwyneth's favorite spot. The amount of times her and Joseph absolutely ruined. Anyways, Gwyneth and Tanisha were just about to get to the good part, when suddenly... Oh. My. Courtney. Bella just walked in on her mums getting wicked. She ran down the hall to give them their privacy, and once they were decent, Bella let her mums have it. Why the hell are they doing that on the family couch? The one that they all sit on, and sleep on, and watch TV on. Gwyneth was so sorry Bella had to walk in on that. They just didn't think she'd be home so soon. Regardless, it happened, and maybe it was the right time to talk about it. Gwyneth hadn't given Bella the woohoo talk yet. Tanisha tried to, but Bella just shut her down. Do they really think Bella doesn't know what woohoo is? She's seen Simhub. She's DJD to fall asleep multiple times. Oh well, the Simhub part was a bit concerning, but overall, a relief for Gwyneth. But Bella was still fed up. She really saw Gwyneth nose deep in Tanisha's peaches and cream. Wait, why was Gwyneth nose deep down there? Why are they woohooing? Well, it was because they were engaged and getting married next week. So Bella was right. She figured for the longest time that the two of them were romantically involved. Wait, she knew? Gwyneth wondered. Of course she knew, Bella said. They were both terrible at hiding it. Tanisha sneaking in and out, her staying all day and late into the night. The few weak memories Bella has from her toddlerhood of the two of them flirting, it felt good knowing she was right. She was so happy that Tanisha would always be around now. Well, Gwyneth's ego was cooked, but at the very least, Bella knows the truth now, and she was happy with it. But Bella was going to have to work overtime to get that image of her mom's playing rock, paper, scissors, no rock, no paper, out of her head and pray that it wouldn't make its way into her dreams. She can't afford to lose sleep tonight. Tomorrow's gonna be a big day. She arrived to school the next day bright and early. The memory of her mom's last night incessantly playing over and over again in her head against her will. She would just have to shift her focus to something else. Ruining Kendra Smith's life, she started going around the school to several of her friends and classmates, filling them all in about Kendra's lies about work telling them to spread it to everyone they know and every single sim she told was very interested but Bella messed up when she started running her mouth about Kendra to her best friend and next door neighbor Tessa fucking Scott holy shit Joseph's not so secret daughter is all grown up but of course Bella had no idea that Tessa was Joseph's secret child like she also had no idea that Tessa was a loyal friend to Kendra texting her all the deets during class about what Bella was saying about her, and of course, Kendra was not happy about that. How did she even find that out to begin with? After class, Kendra and Tessa went to find Bella, who was standing perfectly still in the hallway. Kendra really couldn't believe Bella got so ballsy. Did she really want to play with her? Did she truly realize who she was fucking with and what she's getting herself into? Bella made it clear to Kendra. She doesn't scare her anymore, and she wasn't going down without a fight. Kendra knew what Bella was saying. This means war. War in the hallways. 
war in the cafeteria where everyone could see it. And war in class. Well, on days where Bella wasn't feeling super pretty, she felt super pretty today. Though, as the days went by and punches got gnarlier, Bella couldn't help but notice Kendra's somber mood. Hum, was someone finally giving up? In fact, Kendra was so embarrassed that she left class to hide in the bathroom without the teacher's permission, but unbeknownst to Bella, Kendra's reason for hiding in the bathroom had nothing to do with her secret being exposed or the fights they'd been getting into in the hallways. It was a lot deeper than that. As Bella was heading out for the day and too thrifty to get some bobo, she realized she was being followed and by no other than Kendra Smith. Damn, she really wanted to catch the smoke again, but that was not the reason Kendra was here. She was here to apologize. Apologize? Oh, she really has given up. Through her asthma attack, Bella basked in her sweet victory. Kendra had officially waved the white flag, but Bella was curious as to why. What was the catch? Kendra was just over it. She didn't want to have to look over her shoulder while on the way to class, or hear the other kids talk about her, or hurt Bella anymore. What did she mean she didn't want to hurt Bella anymore? Wasn't that the whole reason why she started bullying her to begin with? Kendra was getting annoyed. Can't Bella just leave it alone and accept her apology? But no, she couldn't. That wasn't good enough for her. Bella grabbing Kendra as she tried to walk away. What was the real reason? God, why couldn't she just leave it alone? What the fuck was that? What in the fresh hell just happened? Did Kendra just kiss Bella? And did Bella actually like it? Okay, maybe she did a little bit, but she resumed focus. Why on earth did Kendra just do that? She demanded answers now. They weren't leaving this spot until she gets them. Does Kendra like Bella? Ugh, yes, Kendra likes Bella, she likes her a lot, the hell, why, she's been kicking her ass pretty much every single day since she transferred to Copperdale, was Kendra into that or something, no, she exclaimed, that's not one of her woohoo turn-ons, she's always liked Bella truly, and she feels terrible about bullying her growing up, before she transferred to Copperdale, she thought about Bella often, growing fond of her, she was hoping once she transferred here, she could make Make amends, but that was something Bella obviously wasn't interested in. Of course it wasn't something she was interested in. She ruined her growing up. And if she thinks having a crush on her would get her out of Bella ruining her life, she was highly mistaken. Bella hated her, so she should probably do whatever she can to get over these pathetic little feelings because she would never reciprocate them, Bella promised. She left Kendra high and dry, walking through the school and back home to Windenburg wandering along the way. What the hell just happened? And what was she going to do about it? 